morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to It's Just Plain Cyber. Welcome to episode two, and I hope you'll enjoy this episode as we have joined the uh, last few episodes, or the last episode, sorry, in the future ones. But before we get started, uh, let's do the little disclaimer, so it protects ourselves. So I'll be, my views and Steve's views during this episode or any future episodes are our views entirely and has no relation or connection to our current company or our past companies. So that, that's that out of the way, Steve. I get all the difficult job. <laughs> the formalities out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I'll have to change that around so it's, uh, so it's different. Um, so let's start this one so what, what are we going to talk about uh, in this episode Steve can you uh, can you remember what we said we we're going to talk about yeah I think we'll um I think so the first one if anybody's checked out we uh just did a slight brief introduction in terms of what the format will be this week this month um will be a bit of a roundup of what we've been doing from our personal lives um because we also do want to connect with people on a personal level be good to hear what other people get up to in their personal lives we're gonna we're gonna look at the differences between information security and cyber security which i think is always a big misconception um then we're going to look at some hot topics um some recent news uh there's a there was a relatively big um, issue with one of the slightly larger casinos in in vegas we're going to touch on and then Shall we say? And then, um, yeah, just a couple of other bits as well. But um, yeah. yeah, I think yeah, but mainly it's uh, it's kind of a we'll just ease everybody in. Yeah, so it's, like, it's like teaching people to swim. We're not going to put them in the deep end yet. We'll just <laughs> no. Around. Well, please Let don't. Them around. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it to me either. <laughs> no, no. Okay then. So I'll I'll, I'll make a start on this. Um, well, so, yeah. How how Terry? How has your week been? Oh, my week. Uh, weeks, should I say? Uh, it's been busy at work, which is which is good. Um, I went to, I think it was last last Thursday, I think it was the 19th, I went to a, an e-crime conference in London. Um, it's uh, the, mid, the mid-year the mid one, even though it's towards the end of the year. Um, and it's all different uh, cybersecurity, information security people with all the expert knowledge talking about different topics such as cloud security, um, jobs in, in, in the industry. Um, people at the companies how they've dealt with different cyber attacks and things like that and there's also little education sessions where you can go and do little workshops that was really interesting uh, so i went down on the wednesday wednesday night came back on the friday morning uh, full day on the thursday but that was good uh, what else did i do oh yes i had a we had a peaky blinders theme night at our golf club on saturday nice yes it was good um I well, well, I'm not gonna get. We're not gonna brag about it, but I won best dressed male. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, I, I went as Alfie Solomon's. Alfie Solomon's, and I had to try and grow some kind of a stubbly beard to make me look a little bit more like I, him. I'll lend you some if you want, mate. No, and, uh, <laughs> I think after a week I got a little bit of stubble, but it was a, uh, but it was all right. Um, didn't play any golf this weekend. Oh. Uh, which is which is a pity because it was a partner's weekend as I call it you know giving all your time to your partner ah. well that was it um kids still pain in the backside but <laughs> yeah, we've, got, we've, got, we've got to carry on we've got to we've got to carry on and enjoy our world in this uh slightly colder as it gets colder now what about yourself Steve did you anything well, interesting probably not quite as interesting as dressing up as uh Miss Solomon's from uh Peaky Blinders um <laughs> From my side, uh, I, I mean, in my personal life, I'm, I'm a big fan of mixed martial arts. So um, I've been looking forward to. There was a big UFC event this weekend, which was in Abu Dhabi. Normally, I have to get up at three o'clock in the morning to watch the ones that are over in Vegas, but because Abu Dhabi are the other side of the world, it was um, a nice change actually, because it started at five o'clock. I am also an Arsenal fan for my sins, football. Um, <laughs> oh, lost connection there, that bit. Maybe we'll have to edit that part out of the podcast. Oh, <laughs> oh I thought you were being serious. <laughs> um, yeah, no, um, the less said about that, the better. Albeit, I will take a draw. And then, um, yeah, there were, I know, but I also do like rugby. So I did catch the last half an hour of the rugby on Saturday after the, um, after the UFC. And then... Uh, Friday night, it was my eldest niece's 19th birthday, so I went out for a nice family meal with her. And Sunday, I cooked a uh, nice roast dinner for my lovely fiance. So, a bit of a best of both worlds, I think, really. But that, yeah, that, that's that's a, that's, a, that's a question there. And I, 
the the more you cook for family or la a larger family, yeah. is do you feel um, a Sunday roast is roughly the same as a Christmas dinner, just more people? Hundred percent. I honestly, I, well, I'm not sure what angle you're coming from on that yet, but I hundred I don't know why people over over uh, over egg cooking christmas dinner it's literally the exact same thing you're just cooking more like it yeah. really is it's really okay i cook a roast dinner every weekend without fail for my fiance and cooking a christmas dinner is no different at all it's just more people that like yeah. I, I don't know why people make a big deal out of it to be honest yeah. <laughs> well that's that, that'll be uh that'll be we'll save them uh, christmas topics for uh, just the next <laughs> yeah, yeah we will do yeah 100 yeah. percent. it's a little bit early at the moment so. <laughs> so. Do you, oh do you know what last night i so i also play for a pool team and last night it's a tuesday today for those depending on what day you're listening i play for a pool team on a monday and not only what well, they've got their Halloween decorations up already, which is fair enough. But they started putting their Christmas de decorations up last night. I'm not sure how I feel about that. We're no. we're, we're staying in October. No, I think last year, I, last year I lost the bet with my stepdaughter. I said if she, because she was at university, I said if you don't come here the first weekend in November, we're not putting the Christmas decorations up until the 10th <laughs> of December. And she got here for the first weekend in November, so we had the Christmas decorations up the first week in November last year. No, I wasn't happy about that. But anyway, that's all the boring life stuff. Let's uh, let's, get, <laughs> let's get let's get on to uh, what we're going to talk about today. So, um, let's talk about uh, information security, cyber security first. Yeah, okay. sure. So, sure. I will give you my brief view, and you can come from it uh, from a from a, a career agency's uh, point of view. Yeah. Now. Sure. People who aren't in the business of information security or cyber security can see the both exactly the same. But we could also sit here and says it says exactly what it does on the tin. Um, information security is protecting the company or your personal data. So my bank details, my uh, children's names, my gender, uh, my religion. Um, if I have any sp special needs, that's all information. So that's all information that we need to keep protected. So um, your your what your wife's details, your kids' details, all personal data. And when they link together, they link to to our person. So that's in brief what information security is, and that's also around data protection and things like that. So in a business, you will hear information security more. Then you will hear cyber security. Now, cyber security is what we all deal with in day in, day out. The internet, we can't get away from the internet. You can't get away from your phones. So cyber security is protecting, protecting of your internet access. So your, um, your, again, you could look at it, go to your bank details, but it's protecting you from losing that ability to go to your bank or clicking on an email you shouldn't be clicking on and all these all these silly links you have in an email uh, and making sure you you're protected to do that that's why you when you see companies doing um cyber awareness training that's some company the company i work for do it in two ways so you have your cyber training and you have your information security with the data protection and it's making sure that when you get an email you look at it, you you assess the email, you make sure it's it's great. And if it's if it's not, then you you move away. And this also goes, and this and this is where uh, in the in the in the radio term, this is a good segue. Is it is that the right way word using it, Steve? Segway? Yeah, we'll go yeah. with that. 100 yeah. percent This is a good segue, is as well as um you personally protecting your data and protecting your company's data, by which I it's also on the career side. Now there is loads of careers in the security world. If we call it the security world as a whole, there's loads of careers. It's not just, uh, as we briefly mentioned in the first episode, it's not just your kids that hang around in the basement doing all the, the funky stuff with their code. It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's your um, it's your analysts, your your business security people. So if I go over to you, Steve, and what what do you see from a, from a, a, a recruitment agency of the different roles within? two areas or security as a whole 
Well, I've got a couple of quick questions for you, if, if you don't mind, um, just off the back of what you were asking there, just in terms of going back, which is obviously going to make a little, things a little bit clearer. Yeah. If if we take two, I'll, I'll pull two roles out of thin air yeah. here now. So if you take a security engineer that's going to be hands on with yeah. um, firewalls, VPNs, malware, um, things like that, would you class that as cybersecurity or information security? Um, well, in the business, it will be called information security. So that person will be part of the information security team. Yeah. Um, and they they will be looking at the firewalls, protecting of the business. Yeah. So they 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 will be seen. So if I'm employing as group head of information security, uh, someone in the department, I will be employing them as a, an engineer, an analyst. Yeah. Uh, and their job is to analyze our current environment and make sure it's fine. When it comes to the cyber side, you're looking at people that may be in between IT and information security. Um, and cyber is is it, you you could you could say it as it's it's the new funky word for for for, for the security outside of your business. Yeah, so yeah. That that's what I see. So from what you're saying, that yeah. person would be in information security. Yeah. Um, but he could also be seen as someone who works in the cyber, which is just the internet. And the other role I had in mind, just to, a little bit of clarity, because again, there are so many different facets to the mm -hmm. information or cybersecurity world, which again, we'll, we'll touch on in a minute. Penetration testers. Now they could be internal or external. They could be working for you via an external source, or you can, I mean, the larger companies sometimes have internal penetration testers. Would you consider them information security or cybersecurity? Uh, they're definitely not. Well, when I say they're definitely not, they're not information security because pen, um, penetration test. You, you get, you could put them if you were creating a cyber team. Yeah. Then your penetration testers, or your auditors, or mm. your uh, people like that, they would most probably fall into that into that team. So, mm. and majority of companies have outsourced penetration testers because you don't yeah. want that phrase of, of marking your own homework. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah, there is that. Yeah, that's yeah. So that, 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 there's that part. So, I, I, as I, in my position, I wouldn't employ someone to be a pen tester. I would do that completely outside of it. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it it does tend to only like be the really large companies that have internal because they'll have so many different probably offices and hubs mm -hmm. or external companies they work with that they'll that they'll probably be working with there. But yeah, going back to your. I've kind I've totally gone off topic from what you initially asked me. So, what was your question initially to me in terms of from a career perspective? Sorry. What What do you What roles? What different different types of roles do you see in the GRC world? Now, you're going to explain what GRC is because I've said that to the my missus and she said, "What does that mean?" And I, I told it's government risk and control. So, so you can elaborate. I use like using these big words. Elaborate on on your GRC recruitment. Because that's another area of security, and that's information security, not cyber. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's always one of those conversations I have with people that I'm I'm kind of reticent to use the word non-technical because there are technical abilities, and you do need an underlying knowledge of the technical infrastructure. But it tends to be a lot a lot more policy based. Um, mm -hmm. If you look at, um, for example, a lot of the well, most UK companies are aligned to a framework called ISO 27001, which, depending on the level of people that are listening to this, um, it's um, yeah, it's basically a policy is basically keep people's data secure, making sure the it's a framework, yeah, ISO, but but it, it it kind of covers the entire company, so it, there will be uh, you know the, there's obviously a risk register involved. There are controls involved, uh, but they they will also talk to the more technical guys, you know, the engineers, the analysts, things like that. That's it's kind of an overarching high level enterprise level framework, which helps mm -hmm. should do at least in theory keep the um, keep the company secure. That's kind of the area that I work in. Prior to that, I worked in architecture, and again, architecture is kind of it's like a almost a sidestep to it because again they have the high level and and low architecture, level architecture i i was uh when i went in i i worked for a company um four or five years ago maybe a little bit longer than that 
a company called CGI, and they're not they're not yeah. uh, not graphics. They're not a graphic designer company. They're a consultancy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's and not computer uh, <laughs> generated images. No, yes, no. Uh, yeah, and I worked I worked there for a few years, and the the first consultancy role I got with them was working as a security architect. Um, nice. And that was it was way way over my head. It was so it was so deep and technical that I found it really really hard. You had you had to do it anyway. It's part of the consultancy, but I found that that part of security. So let's you could even say security then. Security covers information security and cyber security. It's all security. Yeah. So, um, so I'm kind of just completely just written off what I've just said in the front then, haven't I? In the first two, <laughs> the first two. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Going back, yeah. So, so going back to what we were what we were saying. Um, I've lost what I was saying. Uh, yeah. So the um. Yeah, obviously ISO. If we if we concentrate on UK firms, obviously mm -hmm. ISO is the new one. There was a new update of it introduced in 2022. I think the, the previous one to that was 2013. I think it's kind of a long, been a long time for an update. Yeah, but was it, it was 2018? Well. Yeah, yeah there, there's, there's been and it, and re really, there's not a huge amount of difference between the two from what I understand. Other than that it's just moving with the times a little bit. There's some more controls and stuff like that. Um, then obviously companies, if if they've got a more overseas, um, particularly America, they might align to things like NIST. The difference between NIST and ISO, other than the controls and things involved, is with a company can get ISO certified. You don't get NIST certified. NIST is yeah. it's it's it, it's. I don't want to use the word tick box. It's not a tick box because if any, if anything, it's more in depth than ISO. But you're like um, the company I work for is ISO certified. You can't get NIST certified. But either way, there are other countries around the world that will that will align to different frameworks. And then if you want to go down the MOD route, you've got HM, VSPF, and there, there's loads and loads of things. And I've I've worked with aviation companies that have the CAA, CAF, and uh, yeah, there, there's so many different frameworks. But the main one that in the UK for sure is ISO 27001, which again, if we go back to where we started in terms of the careers, you'll often find, particularly through the GRC market, whether it's um, people that are coming out of university or people that are coming from another area of technology that want to move into uh, GRC, they'll probably start looking at things like, you know, your ISO 27001 lead auditor or lead implementer. Mm -hmm. um, certification things like that gives you a good idea of how infrastructures work you know the way to look into them you know what you know what are you looking for you know what there's a phrase that's used all the time in information security and it's what looks good and and yeah. that's been able to look at a, a dashboard or a risk register and say look the, you know the information we're receiving from these guys is this is this what we should be seeing and is it not what you know what 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 looks mm -hmm. good you know what yeah. from the company looking at the risk appetite for the company because again that changes as well and you'll be able to probably talk about that a bit more than i will a company's risk appetite will probably change what needs to be done in terms of you know an audit and implementation you know the changes that things that happen with the company um maybe that's something you could touch on in terms of risk appetite things like that because again that that could be compared to a real world scenario as well yeah um we we could uh, and I could, but I'd be taking up another 35, 40 minutes <laughs> okay, talking okay, about okay. that. And uh, we don't we don't want people to fall asleep yet. We want people to 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 get a flavour of security or information okay. or cyber security or security as the whole. Um, before we go into deeper and based on what people feel or give us feedback on, we we can go deeper into things like that. Because you just okay. brought up another thing, which which. OK, it's so along with careers, but it may be another topic we can talk about later is about sure. the different kinds of qualifications you get within security. Yeah, 100%. You're talking 100%. about the, or, the auditor and all that. So yeah. um, that, that could be something we can look at. But and they're, that, and they're two, very, that, two very different certifications as well. The, the auditor yeah. and the implementer are very different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that gives people a, a little, a little flavour of the, the differences. But depending on who you speak to. And again, this is just mine and Steve's view. It's not the, the official law Bible of what, what, it, what is right or wrong. It's just mine and Steve's view. I'm certainly um, not an expert. <laughs> no, no, we don't want to be an expert. I like, I like, I like trying to find things out and, and, and working through mistakes and things like that. So next topic, uh, risk management and third party risk. Yes. Now, uh, big thing in a minute. Yeah. So if we were to ask the world, what is a risk? And what is a third party risk? Yeah, I think people would know what a risk is 
and with that again without going into too much detail people know what a risk but maybe not familiar with what a third party risk is mm-hmm. um, i don't know if you want to kick off kick off this one steve uh yeah i mean for, this is something i i mentioned to yourself in terms of th- this seems to be a, a hot topic in information security at the moment a lot of people looking at their supply chain um and third party risk management again it, it comes through there's a lot of companies okay so i deal with a lot of companies who then deal with other companies that are either mm-hmm. supplying them things or you're supplying them things and there, and there's 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 a transaction between the two whereby there has to be a risk analysis in terms yeah. of who's keeping the data that you are sharing with each other secure now that's the it's kind of strange that I'm kind of doing the information security side of things and you're going to make it. No, into no, 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 this, 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 but, is uh, the whole part, this is the whole part of it. Yeah, it's your view so, and my no, view. So no, it's, of course, it, it, it's that exchange of data it, in a very high level overview, the exchange of data and who is keeping that secure and what what parameters you put in, in place to make sure that any data you are sharing with each other is secure. And are, your, are the products you're using secure? Mm-hmm. How are you doing that? And then how do those two come together? That's my view of it. Yeah. Anyway. And if and if we if we look at it, because I like doing this and I'll do this throughout all the podcasts, if we put it in the average Joe's mind, yeah. what a third party is. So I buy a car, car breaks down, I sense the garage, garage fix part of it, and then they can't they can't fix a certain area, so they send that car away to mm-hmm. somebody else to think fix yeah. now there's the third party one two three there's the third party now as as a consumer i would hope that the the garage who i took my car to and who's sending it off for, to get fixed is respect res, uh, respectable garage that i can rely on um so i've got to i've got to be comfortable that that process is something i'm happy with so yeah. in the real world, that's what a kind of third party risk is. In yeah. the business world, uh, a third party risk is, is is something that I, as a company, cannot control. So when um, I sign up to uh, say somebody's, I, I, I'm a, a construction and I sign up for this company to build a bridge for me, mm-hmm. right? I've done my due diligence due diligence on that company they've got the requirements i want now that company now is is i think they call it sub subcontract that to another company to do yeah. now you've got to be in a position that you've got to be feel comfortable that third party is going to do exactly the same as in uh, risk management as you've got with this other company yeah and that is a hard thing to do with a spreadsheet <laughs> um it, it is a hard thing to do and there are companies out there now and there are people with the knowledge out there now that can help you follow that whole chain and and then and then, and then help you with it because that also facts if that third party has a data breach or loses data or is hacked and has mal as malware in their in their system you've got to be comfortable enough that they've got a defense in place that'll stop it feeding back towards you yeah exactly so there, there's the third part of managing of third parties. Soon, as soon as you, as soon as you send it off to Fred Blog's company to deal with it, you need to know that Fred Blog's is dealing with it. And then if Fred Blog's decides to go and put it over to Susan, then you need to be made aware that they're dealing with that. It's not coming back to you. Yeah, exactly that. Um, but it is it. Why has that become all of a sudden a big thing in the industry? I, I'm kind of just throwing this at you out of nowhere but it does seem like all of a sudden companies are are saying right we need to look at our supply chain we need to look at our third party risk um it would seem like a very standard practice to put in place but mm-hmm. all of a sudden a lot of the clients i'm working at working with are looking at third party risk supply chain operational resilience which is another area we can touch on another time yeah yeah but but i, I think it's mainly down to the cost um, if you can if you can spread the work out to different yeah. companies, it reduces yeah. the cost. So if I pay you X amount to to, to sort out my my bridge, and yeah. then you go okay, then I'm going to out I'm going to third party it to 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 other companies to spread the cost out. Now yeah. back in the olden days, it was me dealing with you, and that was it. 
and there was in fact to be honest with you my view is in the old days i deal with you and i didn't have a clue what you did <laughs> right. so so my my attitude there was as long as you come back and tell me you've done my job i don't care what you do with who you outsource it to yeah. uh, as long as you come back and do that but now because there's been so many problems with third parties the 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 company that starts the process needs to be in a position where they're comfortable the whole way through yeah and not just say you know not, not do blinkers and just say right as long as you do what i asked you to do I don't care what you do with how you do it just do it and that's where the worry comes from yeah and i suppose and uh, yeah and then if you know that there is a standard that is holding everybody that you're working with in place you kind of it's not in the laps of the gods so to speak but you understand that if everybody's following the same standard protocols it means that we all should in theory be safe however mm -hmm. That probably brings up onto our last topic. Yeah, which no. I mean, well, I, there's, I, another, there's another segue. I was, I was. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a good segue. I, I'm going to take credit for that. But um, it was something I wanted to talk about because it was something that I had been following when it happened. It was a few weeks ago now, to be fair. But if we're not going to talk about it now, we're not going to talk about it at all. It was the big, um, well, MGM wasn't the only casino that got... Um, hacked with ransomware well, ha say hacked got breached um there was a number of reasons why i was following it what what for a start one my old employers mm -hmm. are some of the senior managers at said casino um or rather the nightclub that's part of the casino well, hang, uh, hang on steve you've just said 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 casino but you actually released the name of it before we started it <laughs> oh no no it was <laughs> right it was the mgm i wasn't yeah. trying to, to wasn't trying to hide their secrecy it's, it's, all, <laughs> it's all open source um um but yeah uh, but then also it was, just, it was just intriguing to me because the more i read about it 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 seemed uh, that it very much came from a very preventable situation that was essentially i mean it wasn't even fishing was it it was or would you call it phishing? It, it, was, it, well, it was it was credentials, wasn't it? Essentially, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, stolen credentials. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to really get your thoughts on that because that again, I mean, that is we again we touched on it on the first episode when I said yeah, I'm always telling my dad, don't click this link, don't click that link. Um, yeah. That's essentially where it came from, and and that's a huge, huge gap in someone's network if somebody can steal someone's credentials that easily from a company that big yeah and it's um most i say a good 80 percent of breaches start from a human now um this in reference to the the mgm one um what i believed happened and again this is this is just my my view is um and he, and um, credentials were 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 stolen. Now, whether this was stolen via the, the dark web or 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 someone had left a posted note on a train or something like that, yeah. um, it was stolen. Now, you could say the way they stolen it was via a phishing. So they may have got an email that's saying that your account has expired. Please enter your details. Yeah, and they got in there. We've all had that. Yeah, but. Or what could have happened is, and I've uh, when I say I've seen, I've seen not to the level of of that, but I've seen it where a, a user will get an email. It'll say, uh, "Click on this link." You click on it, enter your credentials, and then the screen will say "Not found," or the page will say "Not found." That person innocently will say, oh, "I'll send this over. I'll send this over to one of my colleagues and yeah. and ask them, could you have a go and see if you and see if you do it." Mm -hmm. And what happens then is you get this old fashioned chain mail that goes through where somebody can't get to get the right thing to work. So they pass it on. And sooner yeah. or later, the right credentials will be made available. Yeah. So a director will have it or someone who has admin privileges and then they get it. And then the whole the floodgates open mm -hmm. and it and it starts with something so small as that. Yeah. As someone doing something innocently. And I guarantee that that person who started it didn't even know what what they were doing no. uh, or, or was or was just so innocent like and and this is why we do this is why we do training and this is why we do security training and things like yeah. that to get people aware and to people to understand and 
we all know casinos exist. It's not something that it's hide, hiding away. And we, ne we don't know if somebody says, oh, I do this business. And people go, oh, I've never heard of that. Everybody knows a casino. Everybody knows what money's involved in a casino. Yeah. So if if casinos can can have a breach and any anybody can have a breach, there was nothing that happened there that couldn't have happened to a company that had five employees. 100%. No, nothing, nothing can happen. So this is why I, in my role and in my in my business, I try and really, really force and promote security and being aware of what's going on. Um, and I could sit here and say, oh, they should have done this, they should have done that. Well, I could have told them they should have done something and they would have got through still. So there's no there's no difference. It's just how that company react um, and, and how they deal with it. And we all make mistakes. But if if they pick, picked up themselves and said, right, OK, we've got to correct this, then they'll be in a better place. But it's happened. So we can't really dwell on it too much. No. And, and they are getting more and more sophisticated as well. I've seen a couple of instances online where they've spoken about um, people within a company have received an email saying that they've failed a phishing ex exercise for that that email was the phishing exercise <laughs> it was the email saying they'd failed a phishing exercise so it's it's yeah it's, it's a, I, I i sometimes i, I sometimes well, yeah I sometimes feel sorry for for um em, employees or, or even just your, your your person on the end of the at the other end of the internet is because they're getting so um tough and so hard to recognize to to the person without any knowledge yeah. You're, you're more than likely going to click on something that you shouldn't have clicked on. And it, it's yeah. hard. So I, I'm, I'm running phishing campaigns uh, at, my, at my, my current company, but I'm trying to make the email not be so, not, not, not saying too, so not be hard. too secretive. <laughs> yeah, it's, you can't. It, you, want, you want them to click on it and then go, oh, yeah, oh, silly idiot, I, I do that, rather than, well, I have no idea. Look. Uh, that, that just looked and the, you can only go to a certain level with, with people you can't expect them to be techie wizards on, on the internet so if you're working for a company that just uh, it owns a warehouse and has three or four staff you can't really go too deep because it's pointless you've got to keep it relevant to what your business is no and as an employer you can't really be seen to be trying to catch your staff out constantly because it's not going to build um morale well, i do That's... i try to <laughs> <laughs> especially, to get a job yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially directors if you can get a director name on that on that list of who's clicked then that's that's it that's your pride you go home <laughs> no it's um yeah it's crazy the more you delve into it and the, and and, then, and there's evidence is every single day whenever i'm looking at the news and stuff yeah. of things going like and like Again. to but again, Steve, this this is the topic we can just carry on rabbiting on about. Oh, forever, forever. But yeah, and, and, and that's what this is what we want to do. We want to make it just just a nice little banter between ourselves, 100%. nice little talk. 100%. Not like too. I don't want I don't want people to come and say, "Oh, Terry, that was wrong. That was completely wrong." Or Steve, you don't know what you're talking uh, about. It's all it's all opinions. Yeah. It's all yeah. opinions. And I uh, and. <laughs> I'm a recruiter. I'm certainly not an expert on these things. Yeah. I just talk to people about them. It's fine. Um, yeah. Terry, and I am yeah. throwing this at you a little bit at the end, and I'm happy to go first, but just because I wanted to end on a little bit of a humorous note. Are you a fan of random facts? Uh, it's, uh, it depends how random they are. Well, just just. <laughs> Just I've got a, got a stepdaughter that constantly comes in and gives me random facts that I have oh, no I, I do it to my missus all the time. Um, Go on, then. I just thought we'd end on uh, just a relatively yeah. humorous random fact. We, we, yeah. uh, crocodiles have been around longer than trees. There you go. Is that it? That was it. You don't get out of oh, no, trees. No. Oh, do you know what? And I've actually messed it up. It's actually sharks. <laughs> it's actually, I've messed it up. It's shark, it's sharks have been around longer than trees. Right. There's one little, one little quote for me. Passwords are like underwear. You would never share it with anybody else. You co you constantly changing it, and you wouldn't show it to the public. Wow. There you go. There, that is what's a nice way to end on. That's a way to end the episode. Don't mess up a fact like I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so don't do your stand-up comedian roles, Steve. <laughs> no, no, no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do a very good job in that. <laughs> um, well, I think I we'll, guess... uh, we'll end it there. 
Yeah, I think so. I think so. But I hope everyone enjoyed it. It's been um, been pretty good. We'll uh, we'll build up from there. Any comments from anybody online? Any anyone that watches it, uh, listens to it, LinkedIn, Spotify, anything like that? Let us know any topics you want to discuss. Give us a shout. Obviously, Terry's available as well. Um, anything you want to sign off on, Terry? Yeah, we've uh, I've got a few people, uh, a few experts other than me and Steve because we are experts. Uh, <laughs> a few experts that have said they're oh, happy to come on. <laughs> happy to come on and join us in a, in a future episode so they will all be happening as well in the, in the near future Amazing. So, right. so so um everyone thank you very much for joining us and uh, we'll see you very soon thanks very much cheers guys see you later